Hi, I'm Kat Khan, and I'm here interviewing the Houghton Brothers. Did I pronounce that right? Yeah, you did. Thank you. Oh, cool. Very good. We have Shane there with the glasses and Chris. And we are here at the American Library Association Annual Conference, and they are in Artist Alley. Yes. And we're also in sunny Anaheim, California. Yeah. Shady right now. Yeah, we're in the shade, so it's pretty nice out here. Okay, well, I just had a few questions that um, I'd like to ask both of you. And my standard question has been, how did you get into comics? I think we started... Uh, well, I, reading or creating? Creating. Oh, creating, creating, okay. Uh, I was going to film school, and so I was doing a lot of writing and um, you know, lots of visual projects. And at the same time, my brother Chris was in art school. And uh, I got a little frustrated at film school because it takes a lot of people to make something. You have mm -hmm. to get your crew, you have to get actors, you have to feed them and you know, secure locations. And if you want to do anything really cool, it usually costs money and times. And uh, I realized with comics, I could write whatever I wanted. I could blow up as much stuff as I mm -hmm. wanted in the story. And it took two people. Like, I would write it and somebody would draw it. And so I asked Chris if he was interested in, in doing something. And, uh, yeah, and I was kind of going through a similar thing where I was studying animation and making short films. And in the same way of live action film, you know, animation, if you don't have a crew, if you're just doing it by yourself, which may tend for a short film you are, you know, you can work for, for a full year on a, on a minute long film mm -hmm. or a five minute film um, whereas with a comic you know you can tell the same amount of story in maybe a few weeks worth of work or maybe a month um, and if you spend a year on a comic you can tell this like pretty epic tale um, compared to animation so we, we took those two um, you know loves of, of film and animation and really storytelling and boiled them down to just a different medium and, and when the comics haven't stopped Ah, that's great. Now, um, have libraries been helpful for you in getting your comics in and sharing them with the, the patrons? Have We're pretty new to the library. Mm -hmm. um, our first issue that was published, we self-published for a couple of years and it was very small, uh, not in libraries, and then we got picked up by Image Comics, our publisher now, and our first graphic novel just came out in November of 2011. And so we haven't really had a product for the library yet. And now it's a couple months later and we're here at ALA meeting lots of librarians and, and helping them introduce them, you know, to read Gunther, our book. And, and uh, so I don't think we're, I don't even know if we're in any libraries yet, but uh, I think after this week, we'll, we're definitely going to be in a few. Because um, we've had a great reaction, lots of people seem really interested in it, um, and it's kind of our book is geared towards kind of more boys, seven to twelve, and I think that's a good period uh, when boys are learning how to read and they're interested in reading, but not necessarily blocks of text. And so people are looking for different ways to uh, you know, get these kids hooked on reading. And comics is a great like gateway drug to you know novels. <laughs> oh yeah, well maybe you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, although they're just fun reading on their own. Right. Yeah. 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 Now that we've uh, you know we've got a monthly comic that comes out, mm -hmm. but those single issues, you know, if they were ever to be in a library, fall get apart, demolished. It's uh, just paper stapled, yeah. and they would get so. So it kind of yeah. takes a few of those to make the graphic novel, mm -hmm. yeah. and some binding. And, but it's great to see the the reaction on the books and, and see them, you know, getting out into the wild and out, and out of comic shops and. and more accessible places. A library is uh, very accessible. Yeah. Okay, great. Now your comic is Reed Gunther, right. and it is a very interesting western with a different kind of cowboy, yes. isn't he? Right, Reed Gunther, he's a bear riding cowboy. Mm -hmm. So we don't have any horses in the book. No. There might be a couple, but it's really Reed riding around on a grizzly bear uh, with his best friends. And they travel to the Wild West and they fight uh, supernatural creatures and monsters. We've got uh, giant cow-eating snakes and werewolves and mole creatures. And uh, John Henry comes back from the dead as a zombie. And so it's very, uh, it's goofy, silly adventure. Uh, it's not really violent. Or, uh, you know, or Reed Gunther. It's like he has, he's a cowboy. He has guns. 
he doesn't ever use them. He's, <laughs> it's kind of that type of thing where he's like, he fits his, it's, a, it's more about his character and how his weird ways of solving problems, usually that he kind of creates because he's a little bit of a bumbling kind of guy. Uh, but yes, it's a very fun, fun, uh, adventurous story. Okay. Now, I assume you guys have been reading some comics over the years. Oh, sure. yeah. um, is there anything by anybody else out there that you would recommend? Oh, uh, you mean like for, uh, to recommend to, uh, for anyone who would want to read, whether it's you're aiming at children or at teens sure. or whatever. And uh, stuff that's being currently made or stuff that's anything been out of all time. Anything. Wow, we'll, we'll list a few. Um, yeah, there's a lot. One of my favorite series that I actually read the whole thing uh, by checking it out at the library was Bone by Jeff Smith. Um, that's an all ages kind of epic adventure thing like Lord of the Rings. Super fun. Um, more current titles, I really like. Uh, there's a book called Chew uh, by Image Comics, and it's about a detective who gets uh, psychic readings whenever he eats something so he can solve crimes by like eating a finger, you know, and he's like, yeah. oh, it's really gross, but then he's like, oh, I know who did it. Uh, and it, it's a really fun book. A really fun, like, be a great team book. Good team yeah. book. There's, um, we're, we're big fans of Goon, uh, which is probably more of a team book. Um, big fans of BPRD from Dark Horse. Um, and then we, we love funny books. I mean, we love the, the Simpsons books that are put out by Bongo. Mm -hmm. um, both Shane and I have been working on uh, been working on the Adventure Time stuff, doing some covers for uh, Boom's new series. Shane's been writing a bunch of the Peanuts stuff. Um, we really like those books. Um, yeah, there's, there's, yeah, there's so much. Yeah. Uh, the Life and Times of Scrooge McDuck is a great uh, Don Rosa mm -hmm. series about how Scrooge, Uncle Scrooge, uh, you know, amassed his his wealth. And that's really fun. Uh, I'm also reading a lot of old comic strips. Like I'm reading all the old original Peanuts strips from like the '50s, and like those are really great. And the, the Floyd Gothamson Mickey Mouse strips. Oh yeah. Uh, those are both fanographic collections, and they do a beautiful job collecting these really old strips and presenting them in a really uh, you know, gorgeous book. Uh, and I'm kind of rediscovering all these old things that I read as a kid. So. That's really cool. yeah. Okay. Now. What one piece of advice would you give to someone who came up to you and said, you know, I think I would really like to create comics? I, I, think, we're, I, think, we're, I think I know what you're going to say, and hopefully it's the same thing I'm going to say. Well, I'll, I'll go first. And then you know, let's say it together okay. and see what happens. Do more. Do it yourself. <laughs> pretty close. <laughs> pretty the, close. The main thing is, like, when we wanted to start doing comics, we did. We just, we, I wrote, he drew, we printed it up ourselves, we went to comic conventions and started selling them. People always think they have to, there's some sort of magic thing they have to do to be able to start. And Waiting for permission. Yeah, like I have to get know. hired first or something like that. And it's really, you just have to take a pen to paper with an idea and just go with it. And your first stuff might not be very good, ours isn't. And then it gets better and the more you do it and it's the practice makes perfect type of thing. So if you want to make comics, start making comics. Yeah, and I think the big thing is, yeah, just like continue to do it. Do a short story and then do another and then do a longer book and then do another one and, and you're going to have to just keep doing it and trying to, and we still have trouble with that. It's yeah. like just getting, setting realistic down. goals. If some people will jump in if they're like, I'm going to create my graphic novel epic of my entire life and that's a huge undertaking to be your yeah. first project. So right. keep it short, keep it simple, and, and uh, be prolific with how many projects you do. Keep them short, and then you, you grow and you'll get better, and you'll, you can eventually do that. Epic. Okay. And now I'm going to put you guys on the spot. I've done this to everyone else. It's a hard question. No. Yeah. What one thing would you like libraries to do that you don't think they're doing yet to support comics? Comics, uh, buy our book. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was a good well, one. <laughs> no, um, I, I'm interested. I just heard about this weekend um, about a new project that Iverse, which is a, a digital comics mm -hmm. distributor uh, project that they're doing, where uh, they make an entire publisher's catalog, every book they publish, available. And uh, it, I think libraries are charged per checkout. 
So uh, you don't have to spend the money to buy a book and say, I hope this gets checked out. I hope you know our patrons like this choice that I've made. You give the patrons the choice. You know, anything they want to read, it's available, and it's a smaller price to the, the library, and then it, the money goes directly to the publishers. So I, the publishers and the libraries both benefit, and the readers, because they get whatever they want. Mm -hmm. uh, and that sounds like a really cool idea. Um, and I'm sure there's problems that they'll figure out. Because I was like, oh, how would you get that digital copy? But I think you can get it on the web, and kind of, they know more about it. But that sounds really cool to me, is yeah. the kind of digital distribution through the library mm -hmm. system. Yeah, it's weird to say because I mean, libraries are doing more for comics than they ever have in the history of comics. Yeah. Because they never used to do anything for reasons. And so in the last, like, seems like the last 15, 20 years, maybe really in the last 10 years, has been a big push um, with like, a whole graphic novel section in most libraries. Um, so I think like the, the longer they continue to do what they're doing, the easier everything will become and stigmas will change as to like. Yeah, of course the comics are in libraries now, whereas we're still kind of in a, a period where it's like seen as a little radical, like, yeah. like yeah. you have a modern library of you know, comics, and I think that'll soon just become the norm. Uh, we're very lucky. We live in Los Angeles, and they've got a huge library system, and it's very current, uh, and they have lots of graphic novels, uh, but I think maybe more of, you know, the middle of the country, they're still kind of getting into graphic novels. Um, I know growing up, our, our li library that we had in our hometown in Michigan, in Michigan uh, didn't really have, they had, you know, comic collections of strips, and we devoured them. We absolutely loved them. Uh, and I think they're starting now to have graphic novels. So I think if the libraries don't already have graphic novels or collections of comic books in their system, if they can start, that's, that would be phenomenal.